inside back tick. Ready? And Russell Dome. Here we go. Yellow trunks for back tick. Southpaw stance. Russell Dome in the black trunks. He'll switch back and forth, Brian. And he comes out swinging. And, and that's exactly what he did against Pedro Munoz, who's really the sharpest and the fastest we'd seen him start. Slipped up in that fight, and Munoz, who could just catch you anywhere, caught him in a guillotine. Don't wanted to test the knee. Don't wants to test that lead knee of Beckham. See if he can take some leg kicks there. As he recovered from injury and had a long layup. Six of his ten wins by knockout. Good combination. Man, his boxing is so sharp and his footwork. Feet, hips, always underneath them to deliver power and get in and out of the pocket quickly. And there's the entry for the double leg. So smooth and powerful. And when he gets on top, man, he is aggressive. To say the least. Don't come in on short notice. He's choosing to tie up back to Kier. Maybe save some energy to see if he could get a stand up from the ref. Abandon that now. Now he's trying to roll through, get wrist control, get back to his feet. Well done from Russell Dunn. Keep an eye on the cardio again. And he's tossed back down by Beckett. And right away, one thing sticks out. The size isn't an advantage. Don't a massive band of weight. Looks really actually good at 145 pounds. Not being overpowered here by Beckett. Took the fight on Monday. Brian said traveled from Portland. And, and really here, Beckett's got a He's got to think strategy because he want to stay tied up. He's taking some deep breaths here. He's looking for the suplex. He had success in the feet when he separated. I wonder why he was not let go here and maybe go back to his box. Trying to drag Dome back down to the mat. Good takedown defense by Russell Dome. And really excellent balance. And not to say that he's down, but let's see for how long. Costs you a lot of energy coming back up. That taxes the legs. In 2011, that's where he turned professional. Again, trying to drag Dolan into his room. Now, one hook in. Both hooks in, but his back is against the fence. Hard to finish a rear naked choke here. Dolan trying to survive here. Don't forget, Gears of War 4, available October 11th on Xbox One and Windows 10. Play today with the Ultimate Edition. Back to crank on the neck, trying to stretch him out and get the form underneath. Well defended by Dome, who now continues to carry Bechtick's weight. This is grueling for Russell Dome. Absolutely, and after you know, a near 500-day layoff, too, just trying to get his rhythm, his feel back for that octagon. It's almost like making your debut all over again when you've had that long a layoff. Oh, well, he may have this now. Now he's stretched out under the chair. And it's all over! Mersad Bektik by submission. His fifth career first-round finish. One more time that. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve LeBain's going to stop in this contest at four minutes. 22 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by submission due to a rear naked choke, Mirsad Bechtel. Second career win by submission, both by rear naked choke. He's fired up, he'll visit with Brian. Here we go. Blue trunks with the skyscraper, southpaw. And we unchuck in the black trunks. Mel Anchuk got the call for this fight about four weeks ago, but they brought in the three tallest heavyweights in Poland to train for this, one of them being just a little bit shorter than Struve. He's pushing forward early. Mel Anchuk told me he really feels speed is going to be his biggest advantage in this fight. I know that Struve is the tallest fighter in UFC history. But only Unchuck is six foot. And Street cut 15 pounds for this fight. He's weighing about 280 pounds right now. Look at the size of him. I remember earlier in his career, Brian, that was a big thing to get stronger to, to work himself towards 265. On a huge frame. Ooh, he's a big old boy now. He's landed several nice front kicks right to the gut of Omar Unchuck. Work got inside behind his jab and came right around the defense of Stefan Struve. We know how tough Struve has been that nasty cut. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
did not have to go through that tonight. That was a good body kick. Stunned him when he for a moment. Williams only one chuck, never been stopped. This is his 27th professional fight. We have definitely seen some head kick finishes in this building. Take down. And they're back up. Nice work there by Elmer Lancho. The defense so far. He's going to use this for a judo trip. Gets on the land, Chuck down. He's going to look great for Mount. Ends up in half guard. Well done there by Struve. And Struve has excellent submission skills. 16 of his wins have come by submission. A lot of time on the clock here in round one. Trying to sink his head behind the left tricep on the land, Chuck. Nice job on the land, Chuck, to get his arm back. And now Struve looking to push his knee through, slice through to the Mount. And it's open. See if he can do so. Almost out, Brian. Yep. Okay. And now he's got a hook in. Lost it for a moment. Trying to get it back. Excellent job floating here, maintaining top position. On the land, Chuck in a really bad spot with a minute left in the round. Five of his 16 submission wins have been by real naked choke. Final minute of the round. Back to the mount. Struve just on a, on a whole other level on the ground right now. Again, looking to lock it in and finish his fight. Struve expending very little energy here. On the opposite side, on the land, Chuck using a lot as he's going from belly down, rolling back to his back, carrying that weight the whole time. As the Dutch kick on through, doing a nice job on the ground in round one. A solid first round for Struve. Round two. Very Here in hot. Manchester, I was, that's what I was going to lead to, Brian. It's not the wet, damp weather that you usually get over oh. here. Hey, surprise to see Lomel and Chuck looking for the takedown here. 12 fight win streak into the Gerald Oshaw fight back in 2014 in Abu Dhabi. He's looking for the tight glitch. He's going to unleash some knees here in the body. Big knee. And he doesn't have to bring him up very high no. when he's that big. The same position on Milanchuk got taken down in round one. He stays in the clinch and he's taken down again and in a very bad spot with Stephen Struve. We used to see those vicious knees from 6'9 semi, semi Shilk. Now he's trying to lock it down. Once again, Struve looking to finish by submission. Look, looking for the Darce choke here. Lomelanchuk's well, going to try and walk the fence, but Struve is just... Hit so it all over! Stefan Struve finishes Daniel Only Lomelanchuk, the first man to finish the Polish fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Kevin Satafi has called a stop to this contest at 1 minute, 41 seconds of round number 2. Declaring the winner by submission due to a Darce choke, Stefan Skyscraper True! Here we go! Red trunks for Oven St. Clair, the Southpaw. Black trunks for the Brit, Jimmy Manoa. At least he represents England proudly since he moved to London at age 10. Nice body kick already landed by St. Clair. There's a nice inside leg kick from Manoa, who really would love for this fight to take place in the pocket as much as possible. Both men very strong, and they work on that strength and conditioning. And in this camp for Manoa, it was a big point of emphasis. Absolutely. And he wants to have one punch knockout power land and finish fights immediately. Takes a little while to get used to his style and the way he moves. Heavy knees both ways. The highlight thus far of Oven St. Cruz's career, the win over Shogun back in Brazil in 2014. Top UFC Knockout 16 mobile trading card app now available for iOS and Android devices. Download for free now. Jimmy Mano was doing a very nice job slipping the first punch of Ovin St. Prue. Lands a nice knee to the body there. And another. Manoa. Look 
looking for another win here in Manchester. He's got to be careful ducking his head down. St. Preux's left form is underneath the chin. Nice escape there from Manawa, but now OSP looking for the takedown. Persistent. Just past the midway point of round number one. And again, it was Manawa who initiated the wrestling here. Now ends up on all fours. One hook in for OSP. Doing a nice job here, putting pressure on the head of Manawa. Loses top position, but Manawa used a lot of energy, and now he's back down looking now for a Manawa guillotine. looking for it. Can he lock it in? He's got a scoop to his left hip. One arm in with the guillotine. A lot of time for Jimmy Manoa. Manoa's gonna need to adjust, get to his left hip, not pull. But it's more, more of a squish. Escape by OSP is gonna look to pass here. And now he takes the back of Jimmy Manoa. 20 seconds here in round one. Another transition by both men in the rock. He clinch. Both score, knee by St. Preux, the punch by Manoa. Again, the knee on the clinch. Turner speaking in code to OSP. That's what you get when you train with one guy for so long. He can holler out all those numbers which mean something to OSP, but they mean nothing to Jimmy Manoa. And a beautiful front kick there from Ovin St. Preux. St. Preux can really fire the kicks quickly, and he changes gears very well. Yeah, he throws some great changes, but he's keeping his hands low in range there. This is what Manawa needs to be doing, not engaging in body locks. Good sprawl for Manawa, now looking again for the front headlock. He's got to be careful. OSP could try to lift the head and then lift up underneath the legs as well. And they break. Oh, over the top of the right hand. Big left hook landed there by Manoa. Manoa scoring just missed there. And you talked about the hand position of St. Paul. In the building where Gonzaga Kokops Kokop in Leona Machida won by head kick against Mark Munoz. Fourth time in Manchester. First time since July of 2013. And these guys are standing in the middle of the octagon, slugging it out. A lot of explosion from Manoa as well. Oh, nicely done from me. Manoa has found his rhythm, his range, and his timing right now. Now would be a really good time for Open St. Preux to level change and try and take this man down. You know, I don't, it, it could be the body shots regardless. He's definitely, he's walking and stepping on his heels. Oh, he's hurt! Oh Again, Manoa. Look That's at it. that finish. He is a loader. Jimmy Manoa by knockdown. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee Leon Roberts has called a stop to this contest. At two minutes, 38 seconds of round number two, declaring the winner by Yellow trunks for Belfort and Southpaw. Blue trunks for Gegard Musasi. Let's see how he handles the early part of this fight. Brian talking about the hand speed, the explosiveness of the phenom. He doesn't even want it to happen. He wants to close the distance immediately, get this fight to the ground. Musasi's thrown several kicks now. And now he's his head. Vitor came. <laughs> Gegard caught him and then gave a non-verbal message. Vitor has finished all 14 of his UFC wins. That was a hard kick to the body from Vitor Belfort. Musasi is so patient, so composed when he fights Brian. Ooh, very nice combination. Yeah, he is. Musasi has finished 32 of his 39 wins. His levels of base, and they break. Excellent work by Vitor. That's going to make him very confident. Ryan, I saw Vitor in Curitiba after Jacare defeated him, and he said simply, I didn't start. I didn't 
be the aggressor. I wasn't the one to start the battle. I have to do so in future fights. He's going second a little bit here tonight yep. as he misses with the left hand. Being much more patient here tonight. Just misses with the head kick, but lands a left. And he is still fast. As fast as anyone in UFC history. Nice right hand landed there by Musashi. He's starting to chase Belfort a little bit instead of cutting him off. Gotta be careful. Oh, he lands the best combination so far. Vitor trying to counter. Good combination lands from Musashi. 31 years old, 47 fights, three world championships. Final 15. Good round for Gegard Musashi. Absolutely. Dictating the pace, dictating the range. Got to see some adjustments from Belfort in round two. For the 31 year old. The real key with Musashi is focus. He's been in fights before where if he loses focus, that's crazy. 48th pole fight here tonight. Really speaks to just how good he is when he snaps off a very nice jab. Heavy kick, big answer by Musasi. Yeah, well done by Musasi. Ate the kick and followed the leg back. Nice right hand counter. Take a look at some of the numbers thus far. Significant strikes. Attempted landed. Good defense again from Vitor. 90 seconds into round number two. Belfort. Oh, he's got that kick. Musasi looking for the finish. Wow! Can Vitor survive? What oh my goodness! What a tornado of strikes from Musasi. Unbelievable, but it's not done, Brian. Vitor's in big trouble here. With three minutes left, and Musasi is outstanding on the ground, both with his strikes and submissions. Raining down hammer fist here. Vitor trying to fight back. Doing a nice job pulling the head down, landing a couple good elbows there, but now full mouth from Musasi. Vitor, can he survive? Looking for the submission close. More punishment from Musasi. Musasi so hard to get out from underneath him. Easily transitions to mount, and this has been a, an area that's really been difficult for Vitor Belfort. His last three fights, two of them against Jacare and Chris Weidman, he struggled to escape their mouth. This could be it. It is all over. Gegard Musasi stops Vitor Belfort. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mark Adams called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 43 seconds of round number two. Declared the winner by TKO, Gegard Musasi. Here we go! Black trunks for Bisping, white trunks for Henderson. Wants to drag this in the third, fourth, or fifth round. Feels like he, every round this fight goes, his advantage grows. We saw it against Anderson Silva. He was hurt badly. Came back. He's been rocked many times in his career. Come back to win the fight. Thus, Brian, the early caution and discipline of the champion. Yes. You see Dan Henderson whiffs on the H-bomb, smiles at Michael. In the middleweight division, nearly 1,500. And he connects there. He's doing a really nice job. He's not fully committing to each strike, throwing it just enough to connect, but then get out of the pocket. There's a cut on the forehead, right in the nose of Bisbee. So Henderson caught him somewhere. Yeah, right in the forehead. Yep. And Michael Bisping pumping the jab, pumping the jab, but doing a nice job pushing back off his left foot, getting out of range of the counter strikes of Dan Henderson. In the pocket, Michael's always been hard to hit at range, but he has done a nice job. Oh, it's wide! The right hand again! Henderson! Looking for the finish! Can Bisping recover? Big elbow! He's trying to get hold, but he can't. And Dan is going crazy on top with that right hand. It's been up for now. Wow! Look at the smile on the face.
face of Dan Anderson. We talked about the conditioning. That's what it gains you. Look at the swelling of the left eye of the champion. But that's against guys that don't have the kind of power that Dan Henderson possesses. Nicely done, that rocked him. Very nice. Again with the right hand though. But he took it, you saw a grin there from Michael Bisbing. And again, Hendo counters with the right hand. But you can't lose focus for a second against Dan Henderson. I don't care how tired he is, how hurt he is. I mean, he was losing clearly to Shogun Hua. And in the third round, uncorked the right hand from hell and finished. I mean, let's just look back to his last fight against Hector Lumbo. And there you see Mike's being smart. He's coming forward being aggressive, but immediately getting out of range. That body shot hit him, but he took it. Kick him in the back and left. Taking control. The heart on both of these guys. Very smart of Michael Bisman. And Henderson happy to just stay on top here. Yep. The whole world, Brian, knows it's coming. And he still delivers, and he still connects. Big right hand landed there by Bisbing. Jason right Griffin really said, you're starting to take control of this fight. Look at that switch kick to the body. Saw it wasn't there. The first British UFC champion looking to defend here in his hometown. Colorful heritage. Lineage and all kinds of personality as he fires that left hand three, four times. He landed several punches in that exchange. Dan did land one right hand. Swelling under the left eye doesn't look as bad, bro. He's been starting to faint a little bit. Doing an excellent job getting back in and out of the pocket using good footwork here. Dan Henderson. He's faking, fainting, 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 not giving Dan Henderson a chance to time that big bomb. This is much like he did against Anderson Silva. I mean, big force out of chance. But when he does have the energy, he gets his win back, that's where Henderson needs to throw more combinations. He's looking and he's done a good job so far. There it is again of timing that right. That time Michael was able to get out of harm's way. He rolled with it a lot better. He wasn't yes. coming straight into it as he raises the head kick there and Henderson smiles at him. We're headed to the championship rounds. Championship rounds. He was mounted for pretty much the entire time of round number five. He still won the decision. Yes. Send out looking for that spot, right, Brian? Oh, there it is. Times it. But now, fourth round. Henderson has only been stopped three times in his career by knockout of TKO. And they really wanted Dan to back Michael Bisping up. A heavy kick from Hendo. Jason Perillo. Three minutes. Been 
Tottenham. Dynamic as it was earlier. Could it be now? After that break in the action. Yeah, I'll tell you what, a 50% Dan Henderson punch would still probably knock out the bulk of the middle league division. Man, he was close in round one. Oh. Just missed with the overhand right there. One thing is, though, when Dan Henderson gets more offensive, he's also open to more counter shots as well. Busy at range. Season three, ultimate fight. Ten seconds could be another solid round. Clear round for Michael Busy. Did he get a knee there? No. better at the start of the fifth than he did in the fourth. This game gets creative. Henderson again looks for that move. Controlling range, working behind his jab with lots of feints. Nice combination there for Dan Henderson. Hendo 17 of 18 career finishes by strikes. Hendo starting to go hunting now. Henderson's having a really hard time reaching Michael Bisping. He's starting his combination to center the octagon. He's got to force and push Michael Bisping back to get his back against the fence. Now he's got him there. Now is where he needs to unleash. Bakes the takedown. It's a nice knee to the body. Three minutes. Stolen round two with a big knockdown. Defend it home, following the hook at the end. Hendo's gonna go for it here, Brian. Keeping his distance, not really committing too much. And Hendo gets it there in the right hands inside. 145. On a takedown. Well done, beautiful knee tap there from Dan Henderson. Going back to the basics. Wrestling 101. Very smart. Oh. Here's Biz up. Still though. And it has not disappointed. Hendo looking for another takedown. Bisping fights it off. Good defense there from Michael Bisping. And now Henderson launches a right hand. Let's see if Bisping starts putting together some combinations in the last 30 seconds. Ten seconds remain. They go the distance. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. The judges score the contest. 48-47. 48-47 and 49-46 for the winner by unanimous decision and still.